Warning. Ethanol is highly flammable, this experiment involves working with high vacuum and highly pressurized gases. Lab coat, goggles, and gloves are absolutely mandatory. Today, we will make anhydrous ethanol starting from regular 96% ethanol by making use of molecular sieves. Regular ethanol is usually fine for most of the applications, however, when working with a water sensitive reaction or when ethanol is used as a reagent, regular ethanol is not good enough, so in that case, we use anhydrous ethanol. Materials and reagents required 96% ethanol Molecular sieves, type 4A Argon Vacuum pump First, we need to activate the molecular sieves, despite the fact that they are supposed to be activated, they get moisture upon time and so they get partially deactivated, to do so, we just need to heat them up to its regeneration temperature which for me it is around 250 degrees Celsius, the molecular sieves are placed in a clean and dry flask in addition to a magnetic stirring bar. Then the system is heated up under constant stirring to ensure that the heat is evenly distributed among the system, after a while you can clearly see how the molecular sieves start to release water vapor that gets rapidly condensed at the walls of the flask, in order to speed up and enhance the regeneration, we will create some vacuum cycles. Let's explain what a molecular sieve is. A molecular sieve is basically a porous clay-like material that has a very well-defined and homogeneous pore size distribution, in such a weight that it can trap molecules with an effective size smaller or equal to its pore size. This is indeed very useful as we can selectively trap molecules of a given size from a mixture or solution. We have to do as many heat and vacuum cycles as required until no more water is released by the molecular sieves. When no more water vapor is released, we have successfully regenerated our sieves. Now, we can seal the flask with a rubber septum, then we connect a needle through the septum, and then, we connect it to the vacuum pump, this will remove most of the air present in the flask and so most of the moisture within it. Now, in order to ensure that no water vapor is present during the drying process we will flush the flask with an inert and dry gas such as argon, this tiny balloon, which has been previously evacuated is connected to an argon tank and is half filled. Here you can see the balloon itself. and this is a double syringe used to connect the balloon with our system. One of the needles of the double syringe is blocked with a rubber septum and the other is connected to the balloon. Then the balloon is connected to the septum of the flask and another needle is added so that we can flush the flask with argon. Once all the argon has been consumed the needles can be removed, now our system is perfectly dry and under an inert atmosphere. Finally we pour the ethanol into the flask itself. 
the amount of ethanol used should be about three times greater than the net volume of the molecular sieves used. The system is stirred overnight. After that time, all the water should have been removed from the solution, the system is roughly filtered to remove the sieves, as you can see there is quite a lot of dust left. But this is not really a problem since we are going to remove any impurity left by terms of a simple distillation. Here you have a time lapse of the distillation. Notice that the boiling point is different from the standard boiling point of ethanol, this might be due to the error of the instrument and due to the fact that the pressure of the lab differs from one atmosphere. The anhydrous ethanol is finally collected in a clean and dry vial containing some molecular sieves, The system is finally flushed with argon as explained before. So, here you have it, pure anhydrous ethanol. Thanks for watching.